Hey y'all, Mike here out in Montrose, Colorado, and Natalie over at Somme Footwear hooked us up with another factory tour that we're headed to right now this afternoon. We're going over to Blue Corn Candle Factory. Word on the street is this guy's been making candles for over 30 years and recently just moved into a much bigger facility, which they are super excited to give us a tour. It's actually their grand opening today. So we're getting a behind the scenes look at the new facility. Super excited to show y'all. So uh, we are just about to arrive and get going. I am here with John Cornblue of Blue Corn, a local candle maker here in Montrose, and we're about to do a tour of their amazing facility in downtown Montrose. You'll see the retail space, they have an amazing little cafe and coffee shop, and of course the warehouse and manufacturing center. So John, are you ready to get started? Let's do it. Awesome, let's go. So um, we're gonna go through here. The building is 26,000 square feet and we have moved recently from Ridgeway, Colorado, population 1,000 <laughs> and our old factory was 4,300 square feet and you know we moved into this building in October and it's 26,000 and so yeah, what a big move. Oh, what a massive game changer. This warehouse alone is double the size of our previous factory. This room is the space has gone generally unchanged. Um, the building was a furniture warehouse and it was a furniture store. Mm -hmm. And so we basically got in in June of 2021. We gutted it. And um, this was a staging error for all the magic that happened out there in retail and manufacturing and everything. And uh, we moved from our Ridgeway location in October, mid-October, did the move in three days and we were up making candles and shipping and yeah. We were in Ridgeway for 12 or 13 years. Before that, we were in Rico. Okay. Uh, for another close to 15 years. Uh, Rico's a tiny little town. So y'all been in business for quite a while. Yeah, this is our 31st year in Amazing. business. Amazing, congratulations. Yeah, we were born in Telluride in 1991. Um, I was living in a 10 by 10 cabin. I was a ski <laughs> bum, no utilities. Amazing. Uh, right on Butcher Creek and I was getting headaches from all the kerosene lanterns I was using for light. Mm -hmm. And my buddy Baker Steve said, oh, let me bring down my beeswax scene. And so we started dipping beeswax tapers and the next day we went out into the community and sold all these tapers to the health food store and to nice. all of our hippie friends who were living in the woods because 1991 Telluride, a lot of us lived in the woods. Right. Uh, and you know, the combination of the process of making candles and the commerce part of it, mm -hmm. I loved and that was it. Um, I was hooked and so I've been a candle maker for 31 years. This right here is a cool scene. Uh, this is our wax filtration station. Um, we, we get crude wax. This is... Um, unrefined crude beeswax, cappings beeswax, we get from beekeepers all over the, mainly the upper Midwest of the United States. And the process is, is that when a bee fills a comb with honey, mm -hmm. they cap it with wax. A beekeeper will go on and take that cap off and whip out the honey in the centrifuge and put the unused comb back into the hive. And so the beekeepers want those bees focused on what on honey production and not wax production. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is only the cappings beeswax, which is incredibly clean and light. Right. Um, this is like the raw. This is the it. raw material. Yeah. And what we do is we will melt it and put it through a filter press mm -hmm. and clean out that particulate um, because only clean wax, you can only make candles out of clean wax because the particulate will get into wicks right. and the wick will struggle to burn. Okay. And uh, 
Beeswax is wildly difficult to work with. Um, the beeswax varies radically based on what the bees are pollinating. Mm -hmm. And so every batch is different. And so we will get batches that are, you know, really highly viscous and thick and other batches that flow more like syrup. Um, and so in that, in our candle making, we also have to be agile in terms of choosing the right wick. Right to put into any given candle. And so we'll choose, you know, a couple different wicks for the very same candle based on the batch of wax that's coming in. So it is intensely labor intensive. Right, you have to be incredibly particular about how you make each and every one. Exactly, and so beeswax in general, tough to work with, but absolutely magical substance. Yeah. I mean, everything bees do is magical. I know, right? Um, I, have a, yeah. I have a beekeeper who lives on my street uh, at, in Charlotte um, and get local honey from them every, uh, every single week that they're producing. Uh, and uh, they, I've talked with him extensively about uh, just his process and everything. It is so magical. It is magical. Yeah. And dealing with beekeepers is such a wonderful part of my job, you know, right. making those long-term connections uh -huh. over years. Do you have like some go-to uh, beekeepers? Oh, that, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Long-term relationships, without well, a doubt. Yeah, uh, around Montrose, or where do you get a lot of your? You know, in the early days, we got a lot of wax. And the come on, you can come through, guys. No worries. Come on in. Yeah. In the early days, we got a lot of our wax from Colorado, but there's just not enough wax here, and so we just have sources just all over the United States, and it's Great. a constant project sourcing beeswax yeah yeah so that is wax filtration um here we are moving into fulfillment and this is basically where we are picking and packing all of our orders an overwhelming majority of our sales come through um web sales from our website mm -hmm. um we also have a wholesale business. We've got a private label business where we're manufacturing candles for other companies under their brand. Um, we're getting ready to launch a big line of raw beeswax pillars for Crate and Barrel. Okay. And so um, it's definitely a good mix of business operations, but yeah, the direct like to consumer aspect has always been Blue Corn's strength. Mm -hmm. um, we love dealing with individual consumers and reaching out. We built our first website in 1996. <laughs> Amazing. So, um, I don't know. I think we were pioneers of online candle sales. There we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this space was all just carpeted and this zone used to house kids furniture. And again, we gutted it, put in windows, had no windows and we've got offices going and um, it's a really calm, quiet, sweet smelling work environment. It smells amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it a great wonderful. place to work. Yeah. So this is obviously the packing and fulfillment area, right? This is packing and fulfillment. Yep. Those guys are just picking web orders and, um, you know, spring, it's starting to slow down. Yep. We do when most of our business in seasonal winter. Got it. Um, one holidays. But two, it's just dark out earlier. People right. start burning candles earlier in the evening, you know? And so mm -hmm. we're just outside in the summer and so sales naturally drop. And, um, you know, increasingly we've got all kinds of other products to round out our sales flow during the year. We've got yeah. citronella candles and okay. um, for outdoor burning and, you know, body care products and things like that. And so, um, the future of the Blue Corn brand is going to go way beyond beeswax. We're going to be introducing a line of kind of a fragrance forward line that's based with coconut wax mm -hmm. and um, just ways to expand marketplaces and, right. um, and fill this vast space up. You know, yeah. it's like I'm amazed how quickly we filled what we filled, but uh, going from 4,300 to 26,000 square feet. Uh, but we've definitely got room to grow. That's great. Yeah. How many folks do you have working with Blue Corn? We have 35. 35 we have 35 people. people in Ridgeway, you know, about a year ago, it was about 22. 
And so lots of new hires for the retail cafe, mm -hmm. um, new hires in production. And um, yeah, I mean, to be able to provide people with meaningful, beautiful space to work, it's right. the best. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, domestic manufacturing, it's, it's a hard gig, but if you can swing it's so it, tough. it's rich. Yeah. This is a cool zone here. Um, the overwhelming majority of candles that we make and sell is just the raw beeswax. Mm -hmm. You know, lightly filtered, like we saw before, but nothing else. And you can see the color differences in all of the wax. Yeah, so they're just incredibly different based on the batch. They're incredibly guys. different, you know, and what we do is we do our best to blend these waxes so that we have a fairly consistent product going out to folks. Um, yeah. It's always going to be magical. It's always going to smell great. It's always going to burn great, but there will always be variations of color because that's beeswax. Yeah. And over here, we've got pallets of colored beeswax. Um, we don't do a lot of colored candles, but we do do a lot of colored hand dipped taper candles. And mm -hmm. those are taper candles hanging right there. Your classic tall dinner taper. Yep. Um, What's the process of dyeing beeswax? It's really quite simple. Um, you get a big vat of wax, you kind of, you know, we dye our beeswax on top of this yellow base. Mm -hmm. And so all of our colors are going to generally be very earthy yeah. and whatnot. And so um, nailing exact color is challenging with that yellow base, but we do add ivory and white beeswax at yeah. times so that we can be more exacting in our color. Yep. Um, but you're basically mixing uh, a liquid dye, which is carried in a vegetable base oil mm -hmm. and um, you're mixing liquid dyes and constantly testing and seeing where we're at, looking at a master and saying, yep, nail it. Enough. With the dipping process, which we'll show you pretty soon, you're always left where, since we dip our tapers with solid color, mm -hmm. so it's not over dipping a core of a lighter wax. So you're dipping that color the whole, throughout the whole candle. Um, you're always going to have a vat full of wax at the end of dipping a color because the rack you don't want to be hitting bottom. Mm -hmm. And so when you're done with that color, you'll pour off into pans, you know, cool the wax. And these are just solid bricks of color that are stored until the next time we do apricot or pistachio or eggplant, yeah. you know. So this process is fascinating. Definitely one of the sexiest of our processes to yeah. watch and see. That's, so that's why it's front and center here. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, basically, you're looking at a system of dipping tapers that is thousands of years old. The technology is really quite old. Right. And this is just a, you know, a taper dipping rack that we got from, I think out of Denmark, maybe 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, each rack holds, let's see, 114 tapers. We have eight racks in a round, 912 candles, and they're all counterweighted to each other. Right. So, which makes handling a very heavy rack of candles easier. And you will dip one rack into the molten wax to your top level, take it out, and then move the whole frame around. And as you keep dipping, the other racks cool. And mm -hmm. by the time the first rack comes around, it's cooled enough to take on more wax. Right. Take, um, takes on a wider shape as you keep dipping. You know, 22, 25 dips later, maybe an hour and a half, two hours later, you've got the, your diameter. Mm -hmm. And you will then take a rack, we'll hook it up to this winch scene, and we will submerge it in the molten beeswax for maybe 20 minutes mm -hmm. and everything from the wax level down melts away and what's left exposed is the bottom of the candle and the wick and you're able to trim and free up a pair of candles from the rack yeah. at which time they get processed with a label and um, and you just ship them like that and we ship them like that and this is our 
Let me see here. This is our brand new label. It just showed up a couple days ago. We've reworked our branding and that new look is going to be hitting the website and products all over over the next couple months. Kind of exciting. Ooh. This is David. Hey David, I'm hey. Mike. Nice to meet you Mike. Yeah, good to meet you. He's a dipping master. <laughs> awesome. How long have you been working with Bluecorn? Uh, uh, close to six years now, I think. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, he knows tapers. <laughs> and now he's kind of the rock star in the window. Yeah, everybody Yeah, everybody gets to uh, see the taper process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amazing. And so this is a production table where we're pulling, pouring all different sorts. These are pre-poured votive glass. Um, these are pillar molds where, you know, they're basically going to be freestanding pillar candles. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and we've got processing over there. That'll be a cool shot. I want to show you all those pillar candles. It was exciting to do all this brand identity work. I know, right? You know, really, you know, I, I go for years and years and years just kind of driving with my head down and we picked our head up and we we're like, who are we? What is our brand? What do we do? And it's nice to reconnect with the roots of where we've come from, mm -hmm. which is basically Keeping it simple, you know? Exactly. Simple living, simple ways to connect, light a candle, check out, turn off the lights. I think at some level, that's the essence of blue corn is this return to simple. So these are pure beeswax pillars that are still warm and smelling incredible. Um, and they've come out of those molds over there and what they're doing here is they're inserting wicks into the pillar and they're also leveling out the bottom and whatnot. One beautiful thing about the candle making process, our candle making process, is there's really no waste. You know, right. any wax that comes off the candle, There's hits right the floor, down. whatever, it's just scraped up, refiltered, cleaned, and put back into use. And Zero so. Waste. Well, I wouldn't say zero, but it's like point zero right. zero <laughs> two three. You know, exactly. it's, it's low. <laughs> so, yeah, so here we are coming upon our 55 foot long glass wall, which was kind of a core piece of the vision when we renovated this building. I always thought it would be just completely wonderful to give people a window into what we do. Right. Um, people were always so wildly curious and they were dying to get tours and whatnot. And so um, one of the things about this space is in Montrose is we'll have the the space to invite the community in to make candles, teach them to make candles, mm -hmm. have candle making nights, uh, getting a liquor license. So you, you could go. be making candles with a margarita. So here it is. This is the space that we've been cranking away on they're finally open today and this is a 3500 square foot space uh, we ripped up the carpet sanded off all the glue refinished the concrete floors and put a ton of thought and time and energy into every detail about this space whether it was the light and how the light interacts with the space. Um, we put in some solar tubes to get natural light deep into the room. Um, and one of my favorite compliments that I've been hearing about the space mm -hmm. is that it's both huge and intimate at the same time. Yeah, that's and a great compliment. So, I love that people are feeling comfortable finding all these nooks and crannies to go sit in. You know, I've created yeah. spaces in every corner. And so you have couch scenes where kids can rage and play and um, people can have meetings over there. And yeah, and so again, it comes back to community space and really making space for community to gather mm -hmm. and um, unplug a bit Absolutely. and just be. Yeah. Yeah, I feel honored to be in this position to have uh, such a big impact on the community. I think we're going to have a huge impact here. And um, I'm just so thrilled. <laughs>
Yeah, full of gratitude for the opportunity. So this is just a, a really a happy place for me to see all this raw beeswax in one place. Part about managing the care of a beeswax pillar is caring for it over time and sometimes that means like working these warm sides inward, mm -hmm. bringing more fuel to the flame. And what we've done here is we've brought in a really eclectic mix of products that kind of resonate or jive with our ethos and so it's just tools for simple living. Yeah. The, with this retail space, it was a little bit of a game changer. I think in Candleland, I think we have about 300 SKUs, you know, um, with different scents and sizes, giving variations within the SKUs. But now that we've opened up the floodgates to other products, it's growing fast. We've got a lot of really beautiful local makers mm -hmm. who we're connected to, like this line over here. This is a line of hand forged stainless steel and copper serving tools made by my dear friend Jill Rickers. Um, she's got a company called Beautifully Served and they live just south down in between Ridgeway and Uray. Um, and you know Jill and I go back 30 years. And so it's great to have my people yeah. kind of coming together and, you know, a place to kind of showcase all these wonderful, talented artists. Yeah. Um, she does incredible work. Yeah. And so that too is an excitement for me or a, a point of excitement is to make this space, yeah, a communal space for sharing art. You know, we're kind of developing these little meet the maker. This was just a sample printing, but you know, we're gonna highlight who these people are and what they do and why they're so bloody special. What's up y'all, Mike here from All American Reviews and I am out here in Black Canyon National Park near Montrose, Colorado. We just got done with a couple of amazing tours of great companies that are made in the USA. And tomorrow we are touring Ross Reels. I am super pumped for that tour to give you all a behind the scenes look at this great fly fishing reels company. Until then, see y'all tomorrow.